the 1st of September, 1939. After a false accusation that the Poles attacked a German radio station, Nazi Germany launches a retaliatory campaign against Poland, triggering World War II. Poland finds itself fighting a two-front war when it's invaded by the Soviet Union from the east on the 17th of September. Warsaw officially surrenders to the Germans on the 28th of September, and one day later, in accordance with a secret protocol to their non-aggression pact, Germany and the Soviet Union partition Poland. In the fall of 1940, German authorities establish a ghetto in Warsaw, Poland's largest city with the largest Jewish population. Almost 30% of Warsaw's population are packed into 2.4% of the city's area. German policy towards the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto is particularly brutal and ruthless. Extreme overcrowding, minimal rations, and unsanitary conditions lead to disease, starvation, and the death of thousands of Jews each month. One of the Jews imprisoned in the ghetto is Francesca Mann. Francesca Mann, known as Francesca Mannheimer, was born on the 4th of February 1917 in Warsaw, then Kingdom of Poland. Francesca, a beautiful and exceptionally talented dancer, studied ballet and contemporary dance at the school of Tatiana Wysotska and later under Irena Prusicka, where she studied free dance, ballet, and tap dance together. She was acquainted with famous female artists of the time, such as the singer Vera Gran and stage and theatrical actress Stefania Grudzenska. During her studies and after graduation, Mann gave recitals at the Grand Theatre in Warsaw and was one of the most beautiful and promising Polish dancers between 1936 and 1939, both in the classical and modern repertoire, performing on opera and cabaret stages, in cafes, review shows, as well as at private parties and even in front of the camera, in the short film Poles Are Famous. In May 1939, a few months before the outbreak of war, her talent was even recognized at the International Dance Competition in Brussels, where she performed a ballerina dance inspired by the Degas Ballet sketches and placed fourth among 125 other young ballet dancers. The Second World War started on the 1st of September 1939 with the invasion of Poland. Warsaw suffered heavy air attacks and artillery bombardment and German troops entered the capital on the 29th of September shortly after its surrender. The campaign in Poland ended on the 6th of October the same year, with Germany and the Soviet Union dividing and annexing the whole of the country. On the 23rd of November, 1939, German civilian occupation authorities required Warsaw's Jews to identify themselves by wearing white armbands with a blue star of David. The German authorities closed Jewish schools, confiscated Jewish-owned property, and conscripted Jewish men into forced labor and dissolved pre-war Jewish organizations. On the 12th of October, 1940, German authorities had decreed the establishment of a ghetto in Warsaw. The decree required all Jewish residents of Warsaw to move into a designated area, which German authorities sealed off from the rest of the city in November 1940. One of the Jews imprisoned in the ghetto was Francesca Mann and her husband Marek Rosenberg, with whom she had a daughter. In December of the same year, the Germans called for the death penalty for Jews who had left the ghetto without permission. The same penalty awaited any person who knowingly gave shelter to such Jews. The ghetto, which became the largest of all the Jewish ghettos in Nazi-occupied Europe during World War II, was enclosed by a wall that was over 10 feet high, topped with barbed wire, and closely guarded to prevent movement between the ghetto and the rest of Warsaw. The population of the ghetto, increased by Jews compelled to move in from nearby towns, was estimated to be over 400,000 Jews. German authorities forced ghetto residents to live in an area of 1.3 square miles with an average of 7.2 persons per room. Proper hygiene was almost impossible, as many homes did not have running water. Extreme overcrowding, minimal rations, and unsanitary conditions led to disease, starvation, and the death of thousands of Jews each month. An average daily food ration in 1941 for Jews in Warsaw was limited to 184 calories, compared to 2,613 calories for the Germans. An official German order stated that the basic provisioning for the Jewish residential district must be less than the minimum necessary for preserving life, regardless of the consequences. The hunger in the ghetto was so great that dying people were laying on the streets and small children were seen begging. Between 1940 and mid-1942, 83,000 Jews died of starvation and disease. When a resident from the Warsaw Ghetto passed away, 
Their families would place the body in the street, and it would be picked up in the morning by a funeral cart that made its rounds every day. In the ghetto, Mom performed at the Femina Theatre, Melody Palace, or Café Bagatella until the 19th of April, 1943. When the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising began, after the German troops and police entered the ghetto to deport its surviving inhabitants to the forced labor camps in Lublin district. The ghetto inhabitants offered organized resistance in the first days of the operation, inflicting casualties on the well-armed and well-equipped SS and police units. They continued to resist deportation as individuals or in small groups for four weeks. It was the largest uprising by Jews during World War II and the first significant urban revolt against the German occupation in Europe. In the end, however, the Germans razed the ghetto to the ground. They burned and demolished this part of Warsaw, block by block, in order to smoke out their prey. The Germans ended the operation on the 16th of May when Jürgen Strupp, who led the suppression of the uprising, announced in his daily report to Berlin that the former Jewish quarter in Warsaw is no more. However, thousands of Jews survived in Warsaw, hiding outside the ghetto. Soon, German agents and their collaborators spread the rumor that Jews could buy foreign passports and other documents, and then as foreign citizens leave territories occupied by Nazi Germany. Tricked by the Germans in what became known as the Hotel Polsky Affair, around 2,500 Jews, estimates range as high as 3,500, came out of their hiding places and moved to Hotel Polsky. The Polish underground warned Jews that this was probably a trap, but many ignored the warnings. One of them was Francesca Mann. Although they had been told that they were being taken to a transfer camp called Bergau, near Dresden, from where they would continue on to Switzerland to be exchanged for German prisoners of war, on the 23rd of October, 1943, a transport of around 1,700 Polish Jews, including Francesca Mann, arrived on passenger trains in auschwitz Canal. At Auschwitz, the process of selection and murder was carefully planned and organized. When a train stopped at the platform, the arrivals were lined up into two columns, men and boys in one, women and girls in the other. The SS physicians, such as Josef Mengele, performed a selection. The only criterion was the appearance of the prisoners, whose fate, for labor or for death, was determined at will. The SS personnel, when supervising the loading of prisoners who were to be transported in cars to the gas chambers, often behaved inhumanely and tortured the incoming prisoners in a cruel way, beating the women, the men, and the children with a stick or with a cane while forcing them into the cars. The SS men kept the people fated to die, unaware of what awaited them. They were told that they were being sent to the camp where workers waiting for them, but first they had to undergo disinfection and bathe. They were then told politely to hang their clothes on hooks, take a shower, and were even promised they would be provided with soup and tea or coffee. However, they were taken into the gas chambers, locked in, and killed with Zyklon B gas. After the victims were murdered, their gold teeth were extracted, and the women's hair was shorn by the Zoller Commando, which were groups of Jews forced to work in the crematorium. The bodies were hauled to the crematorium furnaces for incineration. The bones were pulverized, and the ashes were scattered in the fields. This was the end which awaited Francesca and her daughter as well. The Germans told her and other women to remove their clothing, which they had been wearing since they left Poland, so that they could be sanitized before crossing the border with Switzerland. The women were taken into an undressing room next to one of the gas chambers in order to undress. We will never find out if Francesca was told what was about to happen by a member of the Zonder Commando or not, but she somehow foresaw her fate, and in a desperate attempt to protect her daughter and herself from certain death, she took action. There are several versions of what happened next. Philip Miller, a member of the Jewish Zonder Commando in Auschwitz, later recalled how Francesca had noticed that two men were ogling her, and she launched into what appeared to be a titillating and seductive striptease dance. The SS men were hypnotized. Francesca undid her garter and approached Oberschafführer Quackernack and removed her heels with a swift move. She then bent down, grabbed the right shoe, and hit Quackernack with the metal end of the heel right in the nose. His bones crunched, he howled with pain, dropped his pistol, and hid his face in his hands. What happened next later felt like a movie on Fast Forward. Francesca grabbed the gun and fired two shots, wounding Oberschafführer Josef Schillinger in the stomach. He cried out and fell to the ground, then she fired a third shot, killing an SS sergeant named Emmerich. 
The shots also served as a signal for the other women to attack the SS men. One SS man had his nose torn off, and another was scalped. Soon after, reinforcements were summoned, and the camp commander, Rudolf Hess, came with other SS men carrying machine guns and grenades. One account details that the women were gunned down, while another claims that they were forced into the gas chamber. What is certain is that after the uprising, the hundred Jewish women, including the 26-year-old Francesca Mann, were all killed that day in Auschwitz. Schillinger, whom Francesca had shot in the stomach, died the following day. The uprising had a significant psychological impact on Auschwitz prisoners, as Holocaust survivor Vislav Kieler stated in his memoir Anus Mundi, Five Years in Auschwitz, the incident, passed from mouth and embellished in various ways, grew into a legend. Without doubt, this heroic deed by a weak woman in the face of certain death gave moral support to every prisoner. We realized all at once that if we dared raise a hand against them, that hand might kill. They were mortal too. There were many tears shed for Francesca Mann and all the innocent and brave women who stood right behind her, and before being killed, rose up against their Nazi murderers. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.